There are two nouns that you can finish the short sentence, God is, with. God is love, and I believe the love that Elise is showing comes from God. And the the love that you have actually has its source as God. And the second, God is light. And all the light in the world, in one sense, comes from God. God is light. Join me in John chapter 1, please. John chapter 1, and we continue where Brian left off last week. God is light. And light is mentioned four or five times in the early verses. And my assignment, my name is Newt. It's nice to be with you. Many of you know that in 1950, I sang the third verse of We Three Kings of Orionor with Phil Kohlhaas and Ronnie Bauman in sixth grade for Miss Wall. How many of you were there? <laughs> I was terrible, and I, my voice, I don't know what the word is when you're nine years old or whatever. It, anyway, Ronnie Bauman and Phil Kohlhaas went on to be really good singers. Verse 10, he was in the world. Watch this, he's the light of the world. Verse 9, the the true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. 10, he was in the world and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. God is light. He is the source of light, but more than that, he's the light of the world. He's the source of all the understanding you have. One of the old prophecies in Isaiah that got ready for the coming of the sun was arise and shine, for your light has come and the glory. God is full of holy splendor and pure glory. In the Old Testament it says, he wraps himself in light as with a garment. He is pure, shining light. He has the authority to make all the lights in the universe. My opinion, pure opinion, is that the 93 billion light years across of the universe, filled with billions and billions of galaxies, which are each filled with billions of lights, We're all to stress the point that God is the light of the universe. And as easily, in one sense, as God could say, let there be light, he can be the source of all light in our lives. He is pure light. He has no dark corners. He has never had a wrong thought. All that he is is perfectly holy. And we read, and you've studied for three weeks, God is light, capital L, and the source of all light. So that when he said, let there be light, and it was there immediately because he said so, It was because he is light, and he simply put it out there for all of us to see. I stagger at that. (laughs) I can write these words and give them to you, but all I can do is worship and doubt sometimes and think, how can it be? And one of the reasons we come to church is to be reminded of who he reveals himself to be and to believe it and hang on to it all week as we read the bad news about darkness in this world. Here we are at Bethlehem, almost. And 700 years before Jesus was born, he said, your light has come, 
And Isaiah explains, see, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the peoples, but the Lord rises upon you and his glory is going to shine on you. This is a prediction. When our Lord Jesus Christ began his public ministry in fulfillment of the prophecies of Isaiah, as well as the, the one that says in chapter 9, the people in darkness have seen a great light. When our Lord began his public ministry, he walked a long way up to the darkest spot in the Holy Land. I mean dark as far as sin. And there it says, this is how he began his public ministry. He's standing there and he says, the people living in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of the shadow of death. A light has dawned. And he begins. <laughs> and maybe he's already affected you a whole lot. In John 1, when he talks about the light over and over again, he talks about, and it's going to come to the earth in a strong way. One of the most fantastic statements, the Lord Jesus, who now is incarnate in the flesh, the living light of eternity, comes into the womb of a, of a woman named Mary, and now he stands up in John 8, 12, the most extravagant thing he could ever say. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me, is that you? Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Whoever follows Jesus Christ will have a light in him that is the light of life, that he sees everything differently. People, events, the awful things happening in the world. He has light from God. He didn't just say, I am the light of the world. Everybody look up here. He said, whoever follows me will have this light, and it's the light of life. It's the life that helps you to love. It's the light that gives you hope. It's the light that helps you look at people in a different way with love and light. This light has come into the world. The amazing thing to me, or at least it would make a great TV drama, is that when Jesus said that, I am the light of the world, John chapter 8, he's standing there at the Feast of Tabernacles. It's also called the Feast of Lights. There are torches all over in the temple in Jerusalem, and he's standing outside it. And with all those burning lights, the Feast of Lights, he says... Can you imagine if you had been there? I am the light of the world. What would you, you have to think some of them thought, whoa, there he goes again. Our president, I never take sides on that. Our president makes fantastic claims sometimes at his rallies. I'm not giving an opinion on that. I'm staying away from Republican or Democrat. I can talk to you afterwards privately. If you give me money, I'll tell you an opinion. <laughs> no, but his claims were way above anybody who has ever come into the world. I am the light of the world. <laughs> you can't just look at him and say, oh, yes, OK. With that background, he began with his public ministry to shine in his holiness. There was nothing, they made up things about him, but there was nothing actually objective they could find to criticize. He loved people of all sizes and shapes. The lepers had a saying among them, he's one of us, not because he healed all of them, but because he touched them and loved them. He, he went to where no one else went in dark places and spread his light. He loved the beggars and the people that were poor. 
and we worship him. Please, church, don't ever be embarrassed that you follow the light of the world. Don't ever stutter when you say, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. He is light and he is love. Any questions? And he's the source of all understanding and light for us. He gives light. It's not just about understanding, but it includes that. It helps us understand creation. You look at you look at a flower a new way. You see a new baby, and you don't just say, my, she's cute, but you say, look what God can do. When someone offends you, you have the light to not get even. When you follow this light, it's not guidance with a voice, but it's a spirit inside you, a spirit of light, and your life is changed, and you accept your children or your single life in a new way with affection toward God and obedience. He is the light of life, and those who follow him, to them he gives the light of life. <laughs> now verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. On your outline, the first part of the sentence is not just about the lights, but it's that this light came into the world. By the way, all your neighbors and you who have lights in your front, it's, it comes from this saying that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. I don't think everybody who puts up a light and they're beautiful in here, thinks Jesus is the light of the world and this is to symbolize him, but that's what it really means. The light often rejected by the world, the world that he made, the people that he created said, no, thank you. It also says he came to his own that would be Jewish people. And if you're Jewish, I'm so glad that you're here. It's a great place to be. And it says he came to his own people. He had chosen them. He had brought them through hundreds of hundreds of years in the Old Testament. For 400 years, he, God didn't say a word to the Jews. 400 years, there was no prophecy, no word from God. And that was interrupted 400 years later by the gentle knocking on a door of a man whose fiance was pregnant. And Jesus is born. What does it mean that he came to his own and they did not receive him? They saw him. They saw his miracles and sometimes were astounded. They heard his teaching there has to be more to receiving than just noticing. How many people go to a good church like this and just notice? Yep, um, I like him. Count me in. There is a receiving of this light. There is opening the door of your will to say, count me in, but also I will follow in his light and in his way. Is that you? Compared to his sunlight, he is like the sun. We are flashlights or iPhone lights. Or... But he shines and helps us love people. But he came to his own, and many of them tried to kill him. And they did. But... By the way, think of the logic of that. He's the creator of the world who said, let there be light, and there was light, and now he's standing there, and they say, away with him. Crucify him. He came to his own, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not, and then he came to his own, 
the Jewish people, and they rejected him. And if you reject him, it would be like swimming up the Niagara Falls. It would be like putting out the sunlight. It would be like stopping the beam even of a a giant light that people have made. You can't do it. Follow the light and trust him. The light often rejected. Where are you on this? Was received by some. Verse 12, a verse that many of us memorized when we were little and didn't quite get it. It says so clearly, but to all who did receive him, explain, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. To all who did receive him, And so that we get that, we believe in his name. His name is his character. His name is the fact that he is light and he is love. And we know that he would die for our sins. To those who said, not just count me in, but I will worship you and obey you. Is that you? To all of those who received him, He made them children of the light. You know, in a Gallup poll, almost everyone says, yep, Jesus is the Son of God. People whose lives are so incongruous with light can say, yep, I believe in Jesus. To believe in him is to receive his light into your heart. So you admit darkness and you ask forgiveness. To receive him is to say that on that cross, he took all of your sins, every one. You're confessing them now. He punished, he took the punishment in front of a holy God. He made satisfaction. In Romans 3, it says propitiation in King James. It means God was pleased. Yep, yes, that counts for Newt Larson and for you. All of our sins were judged. And when you believe and put your faith in him, that counts for you. What's more, (laughs) his righteousness covers you from then on. By faith, we receive righteousness. Our faith, Romans 4.1, is counted as righteousness, counted as much more than faith, The righteousness of God is credited to our account. Then live in that combination. Your sins totally judged. Your righteousness totally a gift. That's the message of Christmas and Easter. As many as received him, you receive him by faith. You can't see him, but you can see the results of the sunlight. You can see what he's done for other people. You can see how he's already affected your life by his love and his light and his truth. And you trust him and receive him and then live in combination. But as many as received him, that's me, when I, when I was a youth pastor for a couple of years, played the ukulele to lead singing. Terry, if you need me, I'm here with a ukulele anytime. It wasn't good. And I remember one of the girls in our youth group said to me, Karen came across last week. And I said, I think that's good the way you're smiling, but what does it mean? She was from Kentucky, and she said, down where I live, when you come across, you put your faith in Christ. I like the picture. There's a line. It's not just believing he lived, but it's saying, I receive him as my light and my love and my Savior especially. 
came across. And as many as came across, to them he became, he gave the authority to become the children of God. And that would be children of the light. This is not about going out in the sun. This is about going out to receive God's grace and then to live as his children. Verse 13. Who were born, that's a new birth, who were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man, but of God. Do you know that's true in your life? Jesus liked the term born again. It means you've been born and you do see the physical sunlight. He made that. He invented that. He just said, let there be light. And there it was, the sun and 93 billion light years of lights. But as many as received him and said, I believe, I trust him, they are then safe. Actually, John wrote this whole gospel, John 20, 31, that you might believe. I write these things so that believing you might have life in his name. I was watching Brian's sermon last week. You can see it online. And at the same time, on my computer, I had the sermons, so I knew what he said and could continue. And then over on the television, muted was, were the hearings. Uh, it seemed, when I did listen to some sound, it seemed like they weren't agreeing. <laughs> I don't know. But I did think, here we are, and a man is talking to you people about the light of the world, and here's the opposite in some ways. Not a lot of love. Those who receive him, to them it says he gave the authority to become the children of God. Who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. And then he says, which were born, not of flesh. They be, have the right to be children of God. It's clear. Is it true of you? Do you live that way? Again, in con contrast to God's light, ours are meager, but you show light. At least shows life over in Ukraine. You show light when you forgive someone. Any of those Congress people would have shown light if they would have said, I kindly object. <laughs> we show light when we love others or share our faith. We are not only safe, we are light for others. He says, you become the children of God, but nothing on your own got you there. Not of blood, not of flesh, nor of the will of man, causing commentators to go for pages about, not of any kind of birth or any kind of human action or any kind of way that you got here because you're a Jew. No one comes to the Father except through the miracle of his light and his grace. It is all of God. Just as all the light in the world, all the truth is of God. And what is so amazing is someday there will be no more night. There will not need the light of the lamp or the sun of the lamp of the light of the sun. The Lord, that's when we get to heaven. The Lord is the light. Don't ask me how that works. But he is light. And in the meantime, Chapel Street, or guests, you are the light of the world. The children of light are to show his light. This little light of mine, we sang as kids, but it means to gossip, we turn on the light and say, Deaths don't say that. To the hurting, we shine the light of love and it heals. 
to the people in need, we send the light, the truth about Jesus Christ. Jesus, in Matthew chapter 5, said to his disciples and all who would hear today, you are the light of the world. You show the love. You show the grace. You forgive. In 1 Peter it says, we show his mercy who has called us into his marvelous light. In Philippians it says, if you don't complain and grumble, you will shine as the lights of the universe. It'll be so different if you live your life in the light of God. So the one who came here says, follow me and I will give you the light of life. I will help you understand and you will know that it is true. My mother always said that when the Christmas program of children at our church was on, my brother and I, he's a year older, he did some bad things and taught me to sin <laughs> and do bad things. And we were on the back row. She clearly said this was true. There were four little steps of children. And while we were singing peace on earth and mercy mild, we were fighting in the back row when we pulled each other off the back and fell to the bottom. Peace on earth and mercy mild. <laughs> Write to my brother if you'd like to complain. <laughs> in that day, the day of the future, there will be no lamp, no light of the sun. The Lord God will give them light. So from the beginning as we know it, let there be light, <laughs> and there was light. Any questions? And at the end, the one who is light will be the source of light in heaven forever and ever and ever. Oh, my. Love him and worship him. Trust him and enjoy his light. He is the light of the world. Let's pray. God, thank you for Jesus Christ. And someday when he returns, we read the hills and the trees will clap their hands Probably the lights will go on and off, the lights of the universe, as Jesus returns. Thank you for our hope. As you pray, if he is your Lord and your Savior, you follow him, thank him. Not out loud, but just in this special time of year. And follow him every day. If you are not sure of this, what it means to walk in the light and to receive Christ, ask God, help me know even this very day and help me believe. Thank you, God, for your Son, our Lord and Savior, the light of the world. We pray in his name. Amen.